You've clicked on this video for one of two reasons. Either you stumbled across it while you were looking for something else, or better, you actually give a crap about the world situation today. I will reward you for doing what most everyone else is too lazy to do, taking the time to investigate Islam. Not just believing whatever the federal government tells you, or the Muslim sages they parade around the media. We're constantly being told that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance. We're told that jihadist Muslims, who gun down or blow up hundreds of civilians every week, are all just extremists who got the message wrong. And even though they're so certain that they have Islam right that they're suicidally staking their eternal souls on it, we're asked to abandon our common sense and ignore what's going on right in front of our faces. Never mind that this has been going on for 1400 years and over 270 million infidels have been killed since Islam's beginning. Yeah, this is hardly a new issue. Did I whet your appetite to know more yet? This first video is the appetizer. The whole series is only 10 videos long, but I want to make an appropriate first impression. So, I hear someone in the audience shouting, Islamophobe, bigot, hater, racist, because of my unflattering remarks so far. That's how it goes. If anyone dares to speak out against the religion responsible for more deaths than all the others put together, we are verbally abused for it. But I suppose that here in America, the free, it's still better than the physical abuse, imprisonment, mutilation, and death carried out in all countries under the Islamic Sharia law. If you think I'm exaggerating, look into Asia Bibi's case at some point. No, really. I've given you a name. It's a significant one, so take the initiative to learn more. That's Asia Bibi. That's another thing I'll do. I'll give you resources to work with that you might not have otherwise known about. As you may have guessed by now, I'm an infidel, not a Muslim. You may have used your common sense to think, wouldn't I be better off learning about Islam from an actual Muslim? I mean, if you wanted to know about Buddhism, you'd consult a Buddhist. And if you wanted to understand Jewish beliefs, you'd talk to a Jew. So why me? I may be just some prejudiced loser with no hobbies. Two reasons, listeners. One, I've done my research. I believe that the best way to learn people's moral standards is by investigating the religion they identify with. Being a Westerner, it was easy enough to learn about Christianity, and according to the pie chart, learning about Islam would easily bump me over the 50% mark. So, the last two years of my life have been almost exclusively fixated on Islam. What the scriptures say, what Muslims once did, and what they do now. And that leads to my second reason. Since I've researched, I can tell you that being a Muslim would have prevented me from deliberately saying anything condemning about Islam. You can only get the full disclosure from an infidel. And that's only part of it. A Muslim would not only withhold information, they would lie to you if they needed to. I'm not being prejudiced either. There's an actual term for that, and it's called taqiyya. Muslims may lawfully conceal their Islam if they feel compelled to do it. Learn Islam from a Muslim, and I guarantee you won't get the full story. Now, let me just say that most Muslims aren't bad people. To be a good Muslim is to be a bad person. I'm going to end this video by giving you some Muslim terminology, and you can decide for yourself who better applies to, good warlike Muslims or bad peace-loving Muslims. The term will be accompanied by either an Islamic scripture or an Islamic example from current events so that you will have no misgivings about what characterizes good Islam. Muslim terminology. You've got to question a religion that uses terms like these. Maghazi, a terrorist raid. Ishak, 281. The raid on Wadan was the first Maghazi. Ghazwa, a terrorist raid in which Muhammad himself is involved. Tabari 7, verse 15. And this year, according to all Sira writers, the messenger personally led the Ghazwa of Alwa. Zakat, an Islamic religious tax incumbent upon all Muslims, dubbed charity for political correctness. Quran 98 verse 1. They were commanded to serve Allah exclusively, fulfilling their devotional obligations and paying the Zakat tax. Surely the unbelievers from the people of the book will abide in hell fire. They are the worst of creatures. Jizya, a more expensive Islamic religious tax forced upon all non-Muslims. Quran 9 verse 29. Fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth for those who were given the scripture. Fight until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. Hudna, 
a temporary ceasefire which Muslims have a history of violating after regrouping and mustering strength. Hamas agreed to no less than 10 ceasefires in the past 10 years, and after every single one returned freshly armed for terror. Istalama, to embrace, stroke, kiss, a pagan rite Muhammad performed to Islam's black stone in the Kaaba. Ishak, 530. The Prophet stroked and kissed the black stone, then he went out trotting around the Kaaba, as did his companions. When the temple concealed Muhammad from the Meccans and he had Istalama, which means to embrace, embrace, stroke, or kiss, the southern corner of the Kaaba, he walked to Istalama, the black stone, a second time. Dance in a gloating manner. Isha, 530. Then Muhammad Harwala, which means to trot or to prance swinging the shoulders side to side in a gloating manner. Similarly, for three circumambulations, he walked the remainder of them. The apostle only did this to show off in front of the Quraysh. Kumas, the prophet's one-fifth share of the war booty seized by Muslim militants. Bukhari, volume 5, book 59, number 531. We were afflicted with severe hunger the day we raided Kaibar. While the cooking pots were boiling and the food was ready to eat, the announcer of the prophet said, Do not eat anything, especially the donkey meat. Turn your cooking pots upside down and throw it away. We realized that the prophet had prohibited such food because of the kumis that had not been taken out of it. Muta'a, a temporary three-day marriage giving Muslims license to have sex with women without having to permanently be together. Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, Number 27. On the day of Kaibar, Allah's Apostle forbade the muta'a, or temporary marriage.